Hey, what's up guys? Got another question here. I want to answer it for you. So the question is, well, this implant was placed and they underestimated it a little bit. It was, um, the bone is very soft and the implant was pretty short. Uh, and it's not sank all the way, I guess. It's still a little bit, there's like some concern about if this, is this implant seated all the way? Should you remove it and place a longer one deeper or should you leave it as is? So with implants, I think that uh, most of the uh, stress and uncertainty is just in our minds. Honestly, uh, most of our work will turn out fine if we're, I mean, if we're doing quality work. In this case, sure, the implant is not, you know, submerged uh, one millimeter below bone. It's actually right at the bone level or maybe just a little bit above the bone level. I don't think we should beat ourselves up over it. Um, it still will be a successful implant. Yes, you can place a longer one. This was a seven millimeter implant when you had, oh, sorry, my, my um, video cut out for a second. This was a seven millimeter implant when you could have gone longer. You could have used a 10, you could have fit even a 13 or 15 in there. Uh, now, should you use a 15 millimeter implant? Maybe not, uh, but seven millimeters is on the short end of the spectrum. You could have safely placed a 10 millimeter implant uh, easily. Right, so I would prefer to place a bit longer of an implant. So 10 millimeters is, uh, is very comfortable, 10, 11. Seven is short. Short implants do work just fine. But when there is some bone loss, um, a seven millimeter implant will be um, compromised more quickly than a 10 or 11 millimeter implant would be. Uh, but I mean, it has to be pretty substantial bone loss to actually compromise the implant anyway. And not all of your implants are going to get like dramatic bone loss around them, right? It's going to be a very uh, rare event. So I think most likely you'll be just fine. Don't worry about this implant. Just leave it alone. If this patient did have some crazy risk factors like, you know, diabetes, smoking, uh, taking like long-term use of corticosteroids, then I would be more concerned. But um, if this is just your average patient, just leave it alone. Don't think about it anymore and come back to it after the osseointegration period and you'll find that that implant does just fine.